Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. Merry Christmas 2023. Anno Domini, that means year of our Lord. Even the atheists can't argue that our timeline is based around Jesus. Anyway, so it's Christmas. Your wife got you a brand new 5 horsepower 80 gallon air compressor and hopefully she purchased it from thecompressorguru.com Anyway, so before you even go to start putting it in, here are some do's and don'ts. We've got six or seven of them. Actually, I think we have five and two bonuses. Uh, so we're going to get started right away. You've got to go play with the kids, but you wanted to look up uh, good practices for putting a compressor in. So here we are. Number one, when you are ready to start working on your compressor, the very first thing, do it now. Make sure there's oil in the pump. Guys, I've sold maybe 1,700 five horsepower compressors over the years. And out of those, three, maybe four times, I've gotten a call from a guy that got a brand new compressor and it was, my pump's locked up. You go out and he never put oil in it. And, uh, you know, we don't see every machine we sell. And I, I can't double check them all. I, quite frankly, I'm a little paranoid and I do check the ones I see, but make sure there's oil in your compressor. If there's not oil, put good oil in it. And if there is oil in it, when you've run it 50 to 70 hours, I want you to change the oil. And I want you to go to good oil. I'm not going to mention the name, but they uh, used to put a little 234 Ingersoll compressor on their label. And their oil was junk. It was kind of greenish. And it was horrible oil. Don't go to the parts store and say, I need compressor oil. They don't know what they're selling you. You know, we're in this business for a reason. Here's, it's a little pricey, I'm not going to kid you, but here's the oil I recommend. And one is PCI, and it is a 20 weight oil. No, that's PCK. <laughs> this is the PCI, this is a 20 weight oil. Uh, this is synthetic. Uh, the label says it's good for up to 8,000 hours. Now, I normally recommend changing them out at 2,000 hours, but uh, the and that 2,000 hours that's not just one year that's one year 8 hours a day, 5 days a week comes out to 2,080 hours so if that compressor is literally running 8 hours a day 5 days a week you're in a high production body shop this is the oil you want to have even when you change it in a year there's lots of life left in that oil if you're in the southern climate, it's real hot, uh, we put the 30 weight in. This is a 30W40, it's PCK. Now there's one oil between these, but they only, AMS oil only sells it in 5 gallon buckets. Uh, and that's a straight 30 weight. So your oil, make sure you have oil in it. And make sure you change the break-in oil after 50 to 70 hours. And put good oil in it. Number two, take the tank off of the pallet it shipped in on. We need you to unbolt your compressor tank from the pallet. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys not unbolt them, and they've gotten away with it, and that's fine. I'm happy for them, but I have seen a nearly new compressor break a weld on a compressor leg because he left it bolted to the pallet, and the pallet would get damp and dry and damp and dry. It was actually in a body shop and they'd wash the floor down. And wood will contract and expand when it's dry and wet or wet and dry. And that wood moved enough being tightly bolted to the compressor leg. It broke the leg, broke the weld. And I could not get the guy warranty on that because I wouldn't lie. Uh, the... You know, we turned it in, they said no, and anyway, so 
We call this tips and tricks. Now, the recommendation is take it off the pallet. If you aren't going to take it off the pallet, loosen the bolts. You don't have to loosen them to where the bolts fall out, but loosen up the bolts so you can actually move them inside the uh, hole in the compressor and a little bit in the wood. That way, if the wood does contract and expand, it's not going to break the weld on the leg. Uh, but here's the recommendation. Take it off the pallet, put it on isolation pads. You drill down through the hole in the uh, compressor leg. You tap a attachment lag down into the hole. You tighten up the bolt or you tighten up the nut on the lag, and there you go. Now, here's a don't for this. If you're, you'll see this picture here. We were out and we changed a, uh, we moved the compressor because, we'll talk about that in a minute, but we moved the compressor, and the guys that bolted this down was afraid that that compressor was going to fill up with air and get lighter and float away. They compressed the pad so much it wasn't doing them any good. All you have to do is once it tightens up, turn it half a turn and they're fine. So I recommend when you decide to mount it to the floor, take it off the pallet, put it on vibration pads. Now, where are we going to put the compressor? Uh, we have a, a previous video where we showed a compressor room and we were at midway uh, collision. They're just down the road from us here, probably three miles, great guys. They have a dedicated compressor room. It's beautiful. You know what it has? It has ventilation. It has room to work. Uh, they don't throw every little bit of junk in there just because it's someplace to store parts. So if you're going to mount your compressor, a dedicated compressor room is great. And don't, here's a don't. That was a do. Put it in the compressor room. Don't put it in some closet that it, the compressor just fits into. Compressors make heat. A 25 horsepower compressor can generate 100,000 BTUs, which would heat a small garage. Now, we're talking 5 horsepower, so if it was running continuously, it would be like having a 20,000 BTU heater in a closet. Heat and dirt are the enemies of your compressor. So... We need to make sure it ventilates. I have a customer that recently had to change the pump. He's got a little compressor in a tiny little closet and he actually burned up his compressor. And I told him it needed ventilation and he just put another pump on. That's okay, we sell pumps. <laughs> so, um, have some lighting in your compressor room. We worked on a duplex in a loft. Don't put your compressor in a loft. I don't like to climb ladders. Don't put your compressor in a loft. When you're old, you'll appreciate this advice. Uh, they put it in a loft. We had to ride a forklift up and down to get to it, take the tools and my fat butt up there. But we get in the compressor room. The compressor room was on top of the loft and they had it built in. And it had enough ventilation, that wasn't the problem. There's no lights in there. We had to drag lights up and hang them to work, and it was a big job. Put some lights in your compressor room, make it simple for when you, you have to change your oil, change your belt, do some maintenance, do some repairs. Hopefully with a brand new compressor, that's way down the road for you. So the other thing you want to put, actually we're gonna we're going to talk about something else in your compressor room, but we're going to talk at under the electric. The camera wife is wa waving her hand. Yes, camera wife. So when you were talking about putting a light in there, mm -hmm. like it's very easy to, as long as you have electricity there, to throw up one of these LED shop lights. Yes. It's the illusion of intelligence is simply thinking ahead. That's a marvelous quote. Quote, where did you get that? I heard my nephew say it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, folks, we're going to talk more about lighting when we get to electric. But uh, make sure your compressor room has ventilation. The other thing when picking your location for your compressor, uh, the reason we had to move the compressor uh, 
last week was the insurance inspector came in and said that compressor is too close to the wall. Well, I knew it was too close to the wall. I didn't mount it. Their maintenance guys mounted it. And if it had a, if we had to change a belt on it, we would have had to take the compressor loose from the floor, move it out far enough to change the belt, and I wouldn't have moved it back. I'd have put four new lags in and mounted it there. But uh, it, it didn't have enough room to change the belts. So the insurance guy wanted 18 inches. I recommend at least 12. Uh, if you have a large tank, we're not talking your 80 gallon shop compressor in your backyard garage, but uh, I've talked to boiler inspectors that quite frankly, if they can't walk around a tank, they don't want to okay it. And I'm talking these uh, 200, 500 gallon upright tanks that you'll see in industry. And the boiler inspectors actually want to be able to walk the whole way around the tank on those installations. So uh, give yourself room to work. Give yourself, give the compressor room to uh, ventilate itself because the flywheel on it pushes air across the pump. If you put it too close to the wall, you're going to run hot. The last thing about this is when you mount it, think ahead. Like the camera wife said, the illusion of intelligence is simply thinking ahead. Someday you're going to have to change the oil. Someday you're going to have to change the belt. Maybe you'll have to change a motor or something. But leave yourself enough room around the machine to be able to work on it. Um, where was one place we worked on a compressor and every time we went in it, if the compressor room was fine, but they had steel wheels off over the road trucks stacked up all around it. Every time I had to go work on it, we had to go in early to move wheels. Don't make it a junk room. Leave yourself room to work on it. Okay, so number three. If your wife bought you a horizontal tank compressor, one that lays flat instead of the upright, that's called vertical. Uh, it's the words we use in America. Anyway, uh, if you got a horizontal compressor, chances are the drain will be on one side of the tank or the other at the bottom. If that's the case, mount your compressor and put a shim in the side that doesn't have the drain. Put a level on the uh, mounting plate and run it, and I don't mean run it like that, just run it slightly off level from downhill to where the drain is on the compressor. So we don't want to have a heel form in the low side of the tank if the drain's not there. You want to force the low side of the tank where the drain is. The next thing we got we got to make sure of, because you have put money into your shop and you have a beautiful blue pipe system or uh, black iron pipe system, and what do you need to do? You don't run that black iron pipe straight into the tank. You use a flex hose, because once again, your compressor is going to vibrate, and if you plumb a hard fitting into the end of the compressor, that compressor is going to sit there and vibrate and it can either break the weld on the fitting going into the tank or it will break a fitting in the airline. And I have seen this happen. Guys, for a flex hose, now you, some guys will use rubber and rubber's fine, but rubber deteriorates over the years and will crack and start leaking. This is a three quarter flex hose and I just sold the last one I had the other day, but uh, I have a better hose than this that I would prefer to sell, and it's got a hex here, so you don't have to be messing with it with a pipe wrench or good uh, Nipex pliers or anything, and with the hex, you can just screw it right into the tank, and then use a union or a coupler and attach it to your system. And that compressor can set and vibrate all day long and it's not going to stress the weld on that tank. Okay, number five, electric. Guys, when you're wiring your compressor, if it's a five horse, it's going to be 220. You already got your 220 there. Run a 110 plug, a receptacle, uh, and put it next to the box, next to the compressor. 
There's several reasons. A, that might be where you want to plug your light into. If you buy one of these little four foot LED lights that are 20, 25 bucks and they make great light. But there's other reasons for it. Um, we'll get to those reasons. But put a, put a 110 volt plug in there. Uh, you're mounting it to the floor, you got your wiring in already and you're getting ready to mount your compressor. You can take your hammer drill and drill it. You don't have to go stretching a bunch of electric cords. You're, you're there. Now, code in Pennsylvania, and I'm not sure of this, but I think you should have a knife switch within six feet of the compressor. You know, one of those big levers that you pull down and it's not a fuse box. So you have your breaker box, maybe in the other end of the building, maybe 10 feet down. But you're supposed to have a knife switch close to the compressor. Put that knife switch in. It's a easy to see. You visually can pull it down and if you're going to work on it, you can lock it out. Put that knife switch in and run your power out of the knife switch. It's a bad idea to use your breaker as an on-off switch. I'm guilty. Okay, also on the electric, let's talk breaker size. And you, you wouldn't believe how many times I've sold a compressor and I've talked to the guy, oh, I got a great electrician, don't worry about it, he'll wire it up. And I get a phone call and the first thing he says, hey, what's this box? And he's talking about the magnetic starter. He's a residential electrician. No offense to them, some of them know what we're talking about, some don't know what we're talking about. But your res average residential electrician is going to come in and he's going to say, okay, you got a motor, it's 22 FLA, and 1.5 times 22 FLA is 27, 28, we'll put a 30 amp breaker in. That sounds correct for any normal motor. Compressors start hard. So with compressors, when you're sizing a breaker for a compressor, you take the FLA on the motor tag, that stands for full load amps. You take the FLA on the motor tag and you use a 1.75 multiplier. And that's going to bring that figure up to, I sh I'm going to do some math on the screen, but that's going to bring the number up and you round it up to the next size breaker. So generally your five horsepowers take a 40 amp breaker. Uh, so use 1.75 times your full load amp to size your breaker. And I've been in lots of shops where they throw breakers on a regular basis and it's a 30 amp breaker on a 5 horse. And they go, why is that throw breakers? So, well, because you're undersized. The compressors start hard. Use this formula. Ground everything. Ground everything. Ground everything. You ever notice in the Bible, they say, holy, holy, holy. You know why? They didn't have capital letters in the, the writing. And if they wanted to make an emphasis or a point, instead of capitalizing it, they just said it three times. So, ground everything, ground everything, ground everything. Okay, moving on. We're down to bonuses. Bonus number one or number six. You've got your compressor hooked up, it's running beautifully, you're thrilled with it, you've thanked your wife, you've kissed your wife, you've hugged your kids, you've danced around your shop, life is good. You have run it for several weeks and maybe you're due to change your oil, put that good AMS oil in it. By the way, we sell AMS oil, but you can get that compressor oil at any local AMS oil dealer. We can ship anywhere in the country and we have. But uh, your compressor oil, uh, change it. Now, you're going, what else is there to do, bud? We're set up, we're running, we've changed our oil. I want you to drain your system down to zero. I want you to take the ball valve on the compressor that goes to the system. I want you to close it. I want you to close the pickcock down on the drain. I want you to take your stopwatch on your phone, and I don't have my phone here because it probably ring and interrupt the session. And I want you to turn your compressor on and I start your stopwatch. Now on your typical five horsepower compressor, on an 80 gallon tank, it's going to pump from zero to 175 in about seven and a half minutes. 
Some are a little faster, some are a little slower, but record zero to 175, uh, seven minutes, 27 seconds, December 30th, 2023. Now you, okay, we recorded. Where did you record it? Maybe take the starter, the cover off the starter box and put it in magic marker inside, or maybe under the end of the uh, motor house or the mounting area, put it right with magic marker, big numbers on your tank so that you can see that. Maybe five years from now I'll be retired and I'll be riding around Arizona on my Harley in the winter because it will be the only time you can ride there because it's too hot there in the summer. And I'll be riding around and you'll go, gee that compressor doesn't seem to be pumping as good. You know what? You don't have to call me and say, Bud, I need you to come back to PA or Virginia. You just shut the, you drain it down to zero, shut that valve, make sure the pitcock's closed, and test it. And if it pumps up fine, you uh, have a leak in your system somewhere, or you have a tool that's using more air. We just recently had that diagnosis at a shop. The compressor was pumping fine. So, you have a baseline by recording this after it's broke in, but still new. Bonus number two, or number seven as we're working through these. Bonus number two, I told you to wire a uh, receptacle in, and we sell a lot of these. They're just under 90 bucks, and I was thinking about this. I will make a special on this and we will include shipping anywhere in the lower 48 for $99.99. Yes, I'm Earl Shive and I can paint that car for $99.99. No, I'll ship one of these anywhere in the country for a $100 bill. And this is an auto tank drain and it's pretty neat. It's half inch male thread here. On the inside it's quarter inch female thread. This goes to the compressor or the tank. You can put a pipe or a tube, drain it outside, and you plug it into your receptacle. And you can set it for, and I'll, I'll quit moving around, you can set it for anywhere from half a second to 10 seconds to drain. Or you can set it from anywhere from 30 seconds to 45 seconds or 45 minutes between when it drains. So you can set it for 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes this will open and drain for three seconds. Keeps the water out of the tank. If you get forgetful and forget to do that, uh, it happens. So a timed auto drain is it's highly adjustable. It's half male, quarter inch female. I sell a lot of these, $100 delivered to your door in the lower 48. While we're talking drains, if you don't put one of these on, that's fine. That's up to you. While we're talking drains, you got yourself a brand new vertical compressor. I looked over here because I'm all out. The, the, we sold the last one we had the other day. We've got more sold than we have in right now. But most of your compressors that are vertical have the pickcock right in the bottom of the center of the tank. And you have to get down on your hands and knees and you take and you mess with that pickcock and you go, which way does it go? First off, you're upside down. Second off, some pickcocks turn the wrong way to open. So instead of messing with that, take that whole assembly out. Put a quarter inch street L in, take a one foot quarter inch pipe, two threads, and take a quarter inch ball valve and screw it in outside of the radius of the tank and use pipe dope on all of it, of course. And at the end of the day, you don't even have to bend down to turn the valve. You can kick it open and close with your foot. I've done that many a times. Now these new Atlases that we sell, the Atlas and the Quincy, already have moved the drain to one of the outside legs. It's really nice that way. 
Anyway, so that's a, that's a bonus tip. Number eight, or bonus number three, is a silencer. I'm not even going to quote what this is because I, I don't know. We're selling several different sizes and two different brands. I don't know. But for anywhere from $120 to $180, this will lower the decibels on your unit uh, anywhere from 3 to 15 decibels. Most of the noise from a compressor comes from the intake. And this uh, screws into the compressor. This end screws, you put the filter into this end, and you sit there and you quiet it down some. Now, I have an import that is more money and a little bit bigger, and we're going to do a side by side test sometime and see which one performs better. But this is a rarity. This is American made and it's cheaper. I want to see if it's better too. So we're going to do that down the road. We'll do a test. But folks, I am so busy I can't turn around right now. Uh, that's a great thing. So there are five tips, three bonuses, tips, tricks, and things to do and, not, and don't do when installing your compressor. Camera wife, you've been really quiet today. Are you mad at me? No, I was sleeping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, God bless, Merry Christmas, uh, we'll see you next year. Um, we haven't been doing very many compressor videos because I'm too busy, I can't drag the camera wave everywhere I go and say, let's film this, let's film that. When I have customers broke down, we hump to get them fixed. Uh, we got a couple wad machines uh, we got one here now, but I don't know if it's going to fix or not. It's an Atlas LE20. Uh, we'll take a picture of it and throw it in here. God bless. Thank you. We'll see you next year, and have a happy and prosperous new year.